along with this podcast episode there's also a blog on our website on the same topic there are useful links to various schemes and policies that you can refer to we have created a table with the scheme names the amount sanctioned in the budget who can apply to these schemes and some more details the goal is to create a knowledge bank about these schemes which would help our listeners industry players and other stakeholders This is episode number 43 of MSME Talk Schemes for Textile Industry in India Welcome back to MSME Talk podcast for micro small medium enterprise businesses and startups Hello MSME Talk listeners I am Swapnil Karkare your today's host in house economist and researcher at MSME Talk In the last two industry wide episodes we talked about the state of the textile industry in india its current state the competition structural issues challenges in man made fibers and much more today we will touch upon government schemes their objectives benefits issues and how to take advantage of these schemes but before that a small reminder to subscribe to our newsletter whose link is in the description We talked about various issues in the industry including the need for upgraded technology and skilled manpower problems of rising raw material costs unintegrated supply chains and many more obviously the government has been in action solving these issues for many years there are many schemes including flagship programs like production linked incentive scheme or pli and a few less known ones like samarth or integrated processing development scheme we are going to discuss these schemes in brief in today's episode along with this podcast episode there is also a blog on our website on the same topic there are useful links to various schemes and policies that you can refer to we have created a small table with the scheme names the amount sanctioned in the budget who can apply to these schemes and some more details the goal is to create a knowledge bank about these schemes which would help our listeners industry players and other stakeholders let us begin with a flagship program known as pm mitra or prime minister mega integrated textile and apparel park remember in both the previous episodes on textile we talked about how the supply chain is fragmented well this scheme tries to address the problem with the help of this particular scheme the government wants to set up seven integrated large scale textile parks with all the modern infrastructure and facilities these will be set up in partnership with the state governments the government will spend more than 4000 crore rupees up to financial year 2028 so which are the places where pm mitra parks will come up they will be opened in virudnagar in tamil nadu varangal in telangana Nausari in Gujarat, Kalburgi in Karnataka, Dhar in Madhya Pradesh, Lucknow in Uttar Pradesh and Amravati in Maharashtra. These are key locations which will get ready to move in kind of facilities and infrastructure that will bring various processes together. For example, Vidarbha region of Maharashtra is known for its cotton farms. Amravati is in that region only. So, it will be useful for farmers, traders and new and incumbent textile plants to operate in this region these parks will be crucial in attracting foreign investments too around 70000 crore rupees of investments is expected which will generate 20 lakh employment opportunities right now development of parks is going on and exact completion dates are not yet available once those are completed the manufacturing will also begin such parks will definitely make supply chains robust and bring down logistics costs as major activities related to apparel making will take place in one area this is a great news for msmes as well as large players second scheme that i wanted to talk about is textile cluster development scheme or tcds textile industry operates in clusters we all know that we have seen examples of it in the first part of the textile episode some clusters have not been able to keep up with the time and thus have become inefficient when it comes to technology tcds tries to address this issue 
by modernizing these clusters and make them more sustainable. The period for this scheme is from FY21 to FY26. So a limited time scheme. Total outlay is around 850 crore rupees for completing the ongoing projects. This scheme has different sub-components. The first component is for weavers. The aim is that our looms should have modern weaving machinery. Four weavers or entrepreneurs should come together as a group for getting benefits of this scheme. They can be cooperative society, a company or power loom association or even any state government or its agency. The government gives subsidy to construct a modern loom. The subsidy starts at 40% of the construction cost. However, there are more intricacies with regard to the subsidy structure, which you can read in the main guideline. The name of the sub-scheme is called Group Workshed Scheme. The next sub-scheme is for power looms, knitwear and silk mega clusters. This scheme was started to develop power loom clusters in Bhivandi near Mumbai and Erod in Tamil Nadu. Each of these clusters have 5000 looms. Subsequently, similar clusters erupted in Gilwada in Rajasthan, Ichalkaranji in Maharashtra, Surat in Gujarat and a silk cluster in Bangalore in Karnataka. The scheme nudges entrepreneurs and firms to take initiative. They should come together to modernize their clusters and in this journey, the government will support them up to 60% of the project cost. The name of the scheme is Comprehensive Power Loom Knitwear and Silk Mega Cluster. Then, the third sub-scheme within the TCDS is dedicated only to small power loom units who have less than 8 looms. The aim of this sub-scheme is to improve quality of the fabric and productivity by upgrading their existing machinery. The government will contribute minimum of 50% of upgradation cost. It's called In-Situ Upgradation Scheme for Plain Power Looms. Then the fourth sub-scheme is similar to PM Mitra that is called Scheme for Integrated Textile Park. Till now, 50 parks have been sanctioned. Unfortunately, in the last few years, the number has fallen from 54 to 50. Also, of those 50, only 30 are completed and the remaining are under different stages of completion. And mind you, the, this scheme has been in place since 10th five-year plan, that is from 2002 to 2007. So the progress has been very slow. The ambition is to see more than 5,000 units operating in these parks. However, currently there are only 2,175 units operating in those parks. This should become a lesson for PM Mitra program. Launching a program, sanctioning projects, actual operations and employment generation from those operations are entirely different things. Over and above that, time required for firms to enter the textile park and start operations can also be delayed due to various reasons. We can assume that the new policy might have learned from the experiences of the previous policies. Then there are many smaller components under TCDS, which we are not going to discuss today. Next important scheme that we will talk about is called Technology Upgradation Fund Scheme or TUFS. As the name suggests, it's all about tech upgradation. Originally, it began in 1999. Later, it was extended and amended. Here, the business gets a subsidy if it installs machines. There is a list of machines which are eligible for this subsidy. It is a credit linked subsidy scheme for capital investment where the subsidy is up to 10 to 15% of the capex. There has been an improvement in this version of TUFS where MSME to non-MSME ratio is 89 is to 11 while under the previous versions of the same scheme, the ratio was 30 to 70. That means more MSMEs are participating or getting benefits of this scheme. The scheme is applicable for every type of textile industry like handloom, jute, silk, technical textile, made up or garment manufacturing, weaving, processing and such other processes. Till date, more than 2000 crore rupees 
have been disbursed. Next in line is Samarth Scheme, which is a short form for Scheme for Capacity Building in Textile Sector. As the name suggests, this addresses the capacity gap by upskilling people and making them job ready in the textile sector. Till now, 3.3 lakh candidates have been trained. The scheme has been in works until March 2025. From skills, we now move on to environment. It is a well-known fact that manufacturing your beautiful t-shirt is not so an environmentally friendly activity. We have touched upon this in the episode where we discussed man-made fibers. We have touched upon this in the episode where we discussed man-made fibers. Therefore, to make it less harmful, we take the help of technology. But to make that happen, companies, mills and other manufacturers need to follow emission guidelines too. For that, they have to upgrade their plants. Government has implemented integrated processing development scheme to this effect. This scheme will support upgrading of new emission plants in existing processing centers as well as new parks specifically in the area of water and wastewater management. Thus, seven such projects have been approved, concentrated in Rajasthan. But no such project is in the state of Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu. Then, we will talk about National Technical Textile Mission. This scheme ended in FY24. But we will discuss it in brief as it gives us a chance to talk about technical textiles in general. Basically, technical textiles, as the name sounds, is nowhere close to aesthetics or fashion. They are engineered products and have specific function. They can be made out of natural fibers or even man-made fibers. There are 12 segments or types in it. First, Meditech, which includes diapers, sanitary napkins, contact lenses, etc. Second, Oikotech. Which includes recycling waste, which includes recycling waste disposal, or environmental protection kind of products. Third, Protec, including bulletproof jackets, fire retardant, and so on. Fourth, Agrotech, which includes fishing nets and tail nets. Fifth, Cloth Tech, which includes zip fasteners, shoelaces, and similar products. Sixth is Home Tech which includes mattresses, pillow stuffings, carpets. Seventh, mobile tech, including airbags, helmets, airline disposables. Eighth is pack tech, which includes all the packing material. Ninth is sport tech, which includes artificial turf, tents, or swimwear. Tenth is built tech, which includes cotton canvas, tarpaulins, canopies, and wall coverings. Then comes geotech, including geogrids, geonets, geocomposites. And lastly, the twelfth one is indutech, which includes conveyor belts, bolting cloth, and vehicle seat belts. This mission had four components, firstly on R&D, second on promotion and market development, third was export promotion, and fourth concentrated on education, training, and skill development. In total, 1,480 crore rupees have been sanctioned for a four-year period. Lastly, we would like to talk about the flagship program, Production Linked Incentive Scheme or PLI Scheme. Through this scheme, the government wants to incentivize big companies to manufacture more and at a large scale. The scheme is for promotion of man-made fibers or MMF apparel, fabrics and products of technical textiles. It's not for natural fiber products like cotton or wool. It is only for MMF and technical textiles. We have dealt with MMF in the previous part and understood a bit about technical textiles in today's episode. The scheme outlines targets for every year that every company needs to achieve. If they achieve the target for the first year, they will be incentivized in the second year. And that continues for five years. These incentives will be available from FY26 to FY30. The total outlay of this program is 10,683 crore. The scheme targets big players so that large-scale manufacturing takes place in India. 
Now, this does not mean that MSMEs or those who don't get qualified under this scheme will not benefit at all. Because usually when the pie grows, everyone benefits. Take an example of a big textile player manufacturing a garment. That company will rely on so many other smaller players for various processes to finally manufacture higher production targets. Overall, if the production improves across the board, many MSMEs can be benefited from this. So, these are the broader schemes of the Union Government of India for textile sectors, for the textile sector. Some schemes have ended or are at the end of their tenure, such as Group Workshed Scheme, Summer uh, National Technical Textile Mission. The government should clarify how it wants to proceed with the development of that particular sector or component once those schemes are ended. Now, there are other schemes also for various subsectors within the textile industry, such as handicraft, handloom, jute, wool, and silk. We have not talked about them. We have not talked about them here, as each of them has subcomponents and sub schemes which will take a lot of time. Lastly, there's another scheme or policy that has benefited the sector a lot, and that is FDI or Foreign Direct Investment. India allows 100% FDI in textiles, meaning any foreign company can set up a factory in India where it owns 100% of that company. See, initially many companies, small, medium or large, will find it intimidating to compete with a foreign player. However, in the longer run, it is beneficial for the entire sector. One thing that we can see is that all these schemes address most of the problems we discussed in the last two episodes. We hope all the measures will come to the fruition within the next few years. And we hope that India retains the crown of leader in textiles. But for that, the government must address current issues such as rising costs, GST refunds, so on and so forth. These are the issues that are hampering the sector today. And also, the government must critically evaluate all these policies that are in place. Some may not be performing as per expectations. Some may need more financial support. Some may need state government support. We are hopeful that things will turn out better in the end. And yes, don't forget to read the blog post on our website do share both the blog as well as podcast to your friend, colleague or whoever you feel might be interested in this topic. I hope that we have provided enough information about the textile sector overall in three episodes that we have done. We had discussed how textile sector is currently doing, where the clusters are, what are the problems in cotton textile industry, what are the problems in man-made fiber segment, what can be done what the government is doing, and much more. We would be happy to know your thoughts and ideas about this sector. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. You will listen to me the next time with another interesting topic like this. And yes, if you like what we are doing, then spread the word, follow the podcast on your favorite podcast app, and share it with everyone. You can also read our newsletter and blog, which has loads of information about MSMEs. Links are there in the description. Happy to share MSME Talk podcast and the speak ranking chart of 10th country in the Apple podcast country level entrepreneurship category. If you are an expert or provide product or services to small businesses, MSMEs and startups, reach out to us to discuss showcase opportunity in MSME Talk. Contact details given in description.